I'm just going to give um, people a few minutes to um, join us because I know that sometimes connecting to audio can be a little bit slow. So um, we're just going to pause just for a moment, just so people can get in. And I believe now the waiting room is turned off. And I think everybody should be here. Hi, welcome to the December meeting of PMQG. Um, we're so glad that you're able to join us two weeks after our November meeting. Please make sure to mute your audio and turn off your video. And we do have closed captioning available. Later. We'd like to start by thanking our business sponsors, Modern Domestic, Bolt Neighborhood Fabric Boutique, Aloha Sewing and Vacuum and Montevilla Sewing. And up next, I would like to welcome Susan to talk about our upcoming meetings. So thank you, Susan. Thank you, Chris. Um, we're very excited about next year. And I know so many folks have gone ahead and renewed your membership, which is great. Um, we're excited to preview for those who didn't make the November meeting. Um, January is going to start off with a wonderful speaker. Um, if you're familiar with Pride and Joy Quilting, Verushka Zarate, she does incredible layered portraits and will be giving a wonderful, inspiring lecture. She won't be teaching a workshop this month, but uh, please mark January 20th for the monthly meeting because you won't want to miss this. Um, February's meeting will be a week early. I just want to let everyone know, just a quick heads up. Um, we moved it because of QuiltCon timing and not wanting to overlap with that. So if you're going to QuiltCon in person, you'll be able to enjoy our PMPG meeting the week before. Um, we're welcoming Amy Friend of During Quiet Time, who is an incredible paper piecer, a prolific author, and an incredibly kind, thoughtful, wonderful person. So we can't wait for her lecture. And then she'll be teaching a paper piecing workshop um, that following weekend. Um, March is a new announcement. Um, for those who've been in PMQG for a while, you'll remember Teresa Coates. She was a vice president of PMQG when she lived in Portland. Um, she's now a Shannon Fabrics educator and teacher and based in Los Angeles, although she goes on um, kind of life goals, road trips around uh, the country, teaching at different quilt shops. Um, and documenting all of it on her Instagram. So she'll be joining us in March to uh, give a lecture and then teach an amazing workshop on making your own um, quilt that's backed with uh, the cuddle fabric that Shannon makes that's cozy and soft. And she has really cool techniques to share. And as I can tell you from experience, is a wonderful teacher and we're really looking forward to welcoming, welcoming her back. Oh, Rachel, I'm glad that you enjoyed her too. She's so awesome. Um, in April, we'll have another international speaker and teacher, Daisy, Daisy Alshahag of Warm Folk, who is coming to us from Scandinavia, will be giving a lecture at our, our regular Thursday evening. She's making some time change uh, adjustments herself, and then she'll teach that following weekend. She has an incredible style you see previewed behind her. So we're really looking forward to that. And one of the blessings of Zoom has been that we're able to have folks visit from far away, including this she'll be our, I think, our fourth international speaker of the last uh, six months. And in May, we're really thrilled to welcome back uh, four of the five members of Ruby Star Society. If you were at our September 2020 meeting, we were able to host them for a really um, candid, fascinating, and fun conversation about their art, uh, work in the fabric industry, and their inspirations. And they generously shared lots of peeks at what they're working on and what's coming next. So our May meeting will be very similar to that. Just fast forward almost two years and um, Melody, Kim, Rashida, and Sarah will all be joining us for an hour. And I wanna just share quickly, this meeting will be early at 5 p.m. Pacific because of time change issues, but it will be recorded and available for PMQG members only for one week on our private YouTube channel. So if you can't make it live, this is one of the few times you'll get to have um, a, an encore viewing. And then this one, we've been looking forward to welcoming Deborah Boschert. Um, Deborah is an artist, author, and teacher who creates her quilts with layers of fabric, 
paint and stitching. The personal symbols and details in her art quilts reflect her experiences and feelings about places she's lived and the things that she's done. In her art quilts, the tiny details are as important as the overall design. As in life, everyday little joys complement the bigger adventures. And if, as all of us are experiencing in our pandemic lives, the little things often make all the difference. Her award-winning art quilts have been exhibited in quilt shows and art galleries throughout the United States and internationally, including Quilt Festival in Houston, Festival of Quilts in Birmingham, England, Visions Quilt Museum in California, and Art Quilt Elements International Juried Exhi Exhibition in Pennsylvania. She's appeared on Quilting Arts TV and The Quilt Show and is published in many books and magazines. She's the author of Art Quilt Collage, A Creative Journey in Fabric Paint and Stitch, which recently went into its second printing. Congratulations. And she also self-published a workbook called Head, Heart, and Hands, Developing Your Creative Voice. Deborah regularly gives presentations and workshops to Quilt Guild and visual art groups, just like her wonderful lecture tonight. And um, if anyone hasn't registered for her Head, Heart, and Hands workshop this Sunday and is interested, I'm happy to tell you we have just a couple spots left. And Anne will be sharing the link right now so you can click over and sign up when you get inspired. Um, Deborah is currently president of Studio Art Quilt Associates, SACWA, and lives near Dallas, Texas with her husband and kids. What we here at PMTG especially appreciate about Deborah's creative approach is her generous uh, creating and nurturing community. If you follow her social media, you'll see her focus on celebrating diverse artists in quilting, fine arts, and museum exhibitions, amplifying their work and the questions they ask within it. She's also shared her wealth of experience and knowledge with others interested in entering their quilts in, the, in Houston's renowned quilt festival. An intimidating process made much more accessible with her friendly encouraging blog posts post filled with advice. Um, since this is our last regular meeting of the year, I wanted to take a moment to thank my fellow 2021 board members, um, Chris, Aaron, Renee, Angel, Anne, and my program's partners, Carol and Michelle, for all the time and heart they've given this year. I'd also like to warmly welcome our incoming 2022 board with a special shout out to our amazing program's lead coming in, Marika Zimmerly Beck and Allison Evans, who I know will be an awesome team. We're really proud that this year and going forward, our guild programming has been intentional and both reflecting our members' requests for who you want to see and hear from and aligning with our values of diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility in the quilting community. And on a personal note, getting to know our speakers a bit better and learning about their good work in the world and being able to share it with all of you has been a joy in this isolating and lonely year. And it reminds me every month why this community is so important. Thank you so much to everyone who has made our guild so wonderful this year. We really couldn't have done any of it without you. So thank you all. And please join me in welcoming Deborah Boshart. Susan, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that generous and warm welcome. And let Thank you, Deborah. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, Chris. If anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and I can ask Deborah while she's here. Yeah, absolutely. Any questions at all? If you have questions beyond that, um, that theme of captivating compositions and you have any questions about my work in general, always happy to answer anything about uh, materials and techniques. And so Marsha is wondering, she's curious about your use of ladders. Does that have a personal meaning to you? Yeah, I really, I really love using simple shapes as personal symbols in my work. And you saw ladders and chairs and bowls and houses. Um, but the ladder for me really is about getting from here to there and how that's complicated. And that sometimes what's at the metaphorical bottom of the ladder isn't necessarily any better or more important than what's at the top of the ladder. So those are some of the ideas that I'm thinking about and exploring when I use that shape. I also just love it because I think it's really a cool, linear, simple, and yet um, complex shape. Thanks for asking about that. 
Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, Marcy wants to know what type of paint do you use on your quilts? Yeah, that's a great question. Marcy, I use acrylic craft paint. Um, and people often say to me, well, acrylic paint, doesn't it change the hand of the fabric? And I say, yes, absolutely. It changes the hand of the fabric. And that's totally what I'm going for because my quilts are meant to be hung on the wall. They're collages. They're all about layers. That acrylic paint sits right on the surface of the quilt, right on the surface of the fabric. And I love that it adds an additional layer. It adds texture. It reflects the light differently than the fabric. So for me and the style of work that I do, that is exactly what I'm going for. So I, I use acrylic paint right out of the bottle. Oh, okay. And my work is never laundered. So um, all of that works for me. Yeah, I think because um, Vicki was wondering, she wanted you to discuss your painting process. So you're just using acrylic right out of the bottle. Yes, absolutely. Yep. And awesome. most of the time, most of the paint that I'm, most of the surface design work that I'm doing with paint is printing or stamping. Um, so I create a lot of my own original foam stamps and then I'm stamping onto the surface of the fabric. Sometimes I'm doing that to create yardage that I'll then cut up and use in a quilt. And sometimes I'm doing that on the fabric surface, the quilt top that I've already composed. And then I'm adding more design by stamping motifs with paint on the surface of the quilt top. Okay. So That's we have scarier. Awesome. We have time for one last question and um, it's from Lulu. She would like to know more about the workshop this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a three hour workshop. It's your 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., I believe. Um, it's called Head, Heart and Hands, Developing Your Creative Voice. We are going to talk about maximizing what's going on in your head. So that's the ideas and themes and concepts that you are interested in exploring in your work. Also what's going on in your heart, the things that you get excited about, the colors or processes that sort of make your heart beat or your pulse race or make you gasp with, with excitement. Um, and then what's going on with your hands, how to maximize the actual skills and techniques that you can use with your hands. So I really feel like when you are clear on maximizing what's going on in your head, heart and hands, that's when you can create your own most original best work. So I've got some exercises and some examples and some um, examples and quotes from other experts who work in the field of creativity. We'll also be having some breakout rooms where you'll be able to talk to others about um, the exercises that we'll be working on. Sounds great. You don't need anything at all, just a sketchbook and maybe some markers and your workshop chair has the, uh, th there's a PDF that comes with the workshop. And so if you wanna register, I'm sure that she will send that to you. And so you just have to print that out before Sunday and you'll be good to go. Sounds great. And it looks like breaking news, the workshop is sold out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, yeah. I, I think I'm it's sold out while you were speaking, so. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm thrilled. I'm really looking forward to seeing you all there on Sunday. And if it's a topic that's interesting to you, you can totally check out my uh, Head, Heart and Hands workbook in my Etsy shop. And it's available as a hard copy through the mail or as a digital PDF download. So just if you're interested, just make sure you scroll through the Etsy shop and look for the PDF if you want the PDF or the hard copy if you want the hard copy and okay. use that discount code. Yes, and that was uh, PMQG15, correct? Right. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Deborah. Thank you, Chris. Such a pleasure. Okay. So we're going to um, get to our business meeting and I know that um, it's pretty late for you. So <laughs> you're welcome to stay or um, whatever you want. Thanks so much. I, I'll you. scroll through the chat a little bit. I'll make sure the links That's are there. And um, it's true. Well, it's not that late, but no. it's true. I'll sign off. But thanks again for having me. Such a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. Okay.
So I just wanted to um, take a few minutes. So usually during the last meeting of the year, the guild president kind of reflects on the year and does a little bit of a year in review. And rather than doing that this year, um, it's been a little bit of a you know strange year. Um, I'd actually like to just take this time to thank the 2021 PMQG board. So it was not an easy year, um, but we all came together to make this guild stronger. Uh, we worked together to implement the PMQG grievance policy, the social media policy, and we developed a clear procedure for conducting a vote of no confidence. And we did all of this to help our organization um, and to help future boards for years to come. So Aaron Case, Renee Pipe, Angel Van Note, Ann Jenkins, Susan Beal, Carol Subert, and Michelle Fitzgerald, I really do thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know that I'm not always the easiest person to work with, um, but you all lifted me up during one of the hardest times uh, that a PMQG president ever faced. I also want to thank um, past president Kimberly Benefield. As a former PMQG president, you were there to support me and offer guidance um, in a way that a lot of other people couldn't because as I said, you were a past president and I am truly honored to call you my friend. We are 376 members strong. <laughs> we're the largest modern quilt guild and we're doing things that most other quilt guilds are not. And I wanna thank all of our members. So when you all write your emails into us and end them with thanks for all that you do, you have no idea how much that means. Um, it helps us to keep going. There's a lot of burnout with this volunteer position and just that one little line, it, it really makes it worthwhile and it makes us feel so appreciated. So thank you to everybody. Um, you are all so appreciated and um, we're happy that we're able to work hard for you. And I also wanted to thank the incoming 2022 board and I wish you luck for next year and I'm sure it is going to be wonderful. So thank you. So with that, I also wanted to thank our volunteer of the year. So our volunteer of the year, this is going to be a surprise for this person, is Anne-Marie Cowley. To show some of the quilts. So in 2016, Anne-Marie Cowley organized a quilt con community quilt for her carpool group. And then she didn't stop there. This led to her chairing the quilt con quilt in 2018 and 2019. Anne-Marie says that in 2020, Gail Weiss and Tamara King did the bulk of the work. However, I know for a fact that she's the one who mailed out all of the fabric and handled the quilt con submission. She also organized the 2021 and 2022 quilt con quilts. So that's now four, four quilt con community quilts. So not only is she the chair of this program, but she also purchases the fabric. She mails out the quilt quilt kits that she puts together. And then she also long arms them and binds them, my least favorite thing to do. She ships them to and from quilt con. And she does all of this um, with her own pocketbook. Every year the board asks her to provide a receipt for reimbursement. And every year she does not. So Anne Marie, thank you for your generous heart, all of the time and work that you put into making our uh, quilts every year. And congratulations on being volunteer of the year for 2021. And as uh, you may know or may not, all of our volunteers of the year receive a um, their member um, their members for life. So um, don't pay for your membership because it is. Um, Congratulations, you're our volunteer of the year. So thank you, Anne Marie. So Susan or Kimberly, I'm not sure who's um, ready to do the DIA update. Thank you so much, Chris. This is Susan. Um, 
I'm going to speak tonight on behalf of Kimberly. And I just want to be like the second uh, or in the chat, like the 15th, 20th, 30th to congratulate Amory. We're so thankful for all that you contribute. Thank you so much for all that you give our guild. And it couldn't have been a more exciting surprise, I hope. Um, I wanted to share some DIA updates. Um, I co-chair DIA in support of our visionary leader, Kimberly Benefield. And we are absolutely thrilled to be announcing our um, education event with Construct the Present is open for registration. So um, we have a, a wonderful 90 minute program coming up on Wednesday, January 12th. And we would absolutely love any and all interested guild members to please join us. And I can share a bit more about the program now, but you'll have time to reach out to us, ask questions, anyone who's interested, we would absolutely love to welcome you. Um, this is our first educational event we're offering build wide. We do meet monthly and we'd be thrilled to welcome you to that as well. But this is open to all PMPG members. It will be an engaging 90 minute workshop led by a Portland based um, uh, organization called Construct the Present. Several of us have had the amazing experience of working with them in previous events, including myself, Kimberly Benefield, Chris, Renee, and Anne. Um, all of us came away from it with real understanding and in a community learning experience that is, especially these days, really valuable, thought-provoking, and an opportunity to grow. Um, this will be, uh, let's see, sorry, I'm just a little emotional. It's quite a night. Um, we'd love to make deeper connections in our work together, and we would love to have you join us. So registration opens right now, and Anne will be sharing the direct links in the chat. The capacity is 50 members. It's larger than our typical workshop, and the registration cost is $5. Everyone who attends will be able to use a um, $5 coupon code sent out in January with all the materials that we'll be learning from. Um, so what is this opportunity about? Let me credit Kimberly for letting me share her words. Have you ever participated in a team building event or an exercise at work? In those types of exercises, we're asked to do things as extreme as trust balls or play games, dodgeball, in an effort to bring teams together by focusing on goals that are non-work related, perhaps even fun, or require teams to work together collaboratively for the best outcome. Workshops like these are an amazing opportunity for us all to take a look at how we interact with each other as humans, but also as a group of individuals with common interests, quilting, creativity, social justice, and learning. How do we honor and understand our differences as well as we understand our common interests? No matter who you are, your background, or any other elements, you will walk away with deeper understanding of why we react the way we do and how we can adjust in order to better achieve the results we truly desire as a guild. And don't worry, there will be no trust falls. <laughs> this will be on Zoom, so there's absolutely no worries about any type of in-person shenanigans. Um, the link is in the chat. Thank you so much to our superstar secretary, Anne, who has spent this year sharing out resources and links faster than our presenters can share them verbally. And it means a lot to be able to invite you all to register for our first DIA education event. And anyone who's interested would like to hear more about it, please reach out, ask a question in the chat. Kimberly or I can answer to the best of our ability. We'd be happy if you'd like to email. Um, we're just excited to offer this opportunity and I'm really looking forward to it. So um, if anyone has questions, please let me know. But otherwise we would be thrilled to see your registrations come in. And our next slide, I am absolutely thrilled for, and I'd really like to welcome our longtime PMPG member and uh, co-founder of Butterfly Boxes, Allison Enriquez. If you attended the 2018 Fabric Fundraiser back in the old days when we were in person, Butterfly Boxes was one of our first beneficiaries. And I can attest just personally that my family, my Girl Scout troop over the years, and everyone I know who's contributed to some of their incredible um, supply drives, welcome bags for refugees coming to Oregon to start a new life, or uh, community potlucks, 
welcoming our newest Oregonians to meet longtime and established folks and share a meal. Allison's voice is so true and her vision is really beautiful. So I'm absolutely thrilled that we're able to partner again and she'll share more about our upcoming collaboration. Thanks, Susan. Um, sorry, it's okay, there we go. Um, thank you. Yes, I'm Allison Enriquez. Um, I can't see any of you, but I believe I know some of you from previous PMQG meetings. Um, I'll just quickly share kind of what we do um, in case you're not familiar. So I co-founded uh, Butterfly Boxes along with my sister-in-law in 2016. We make, um, we started by making what we call airport arrival bags that are bags with very simple necessities, sort of the first, the things you need in your first 48 hours in a new place. So toiletries, towel sets, clean socks, comfort items. Um, so we create these airport arrival bags and every refugee who has arrived through Catholic Charities Refugee Resettlement Program since December of 2016 has received one of these bags. Um, we grew to include welcome potlucks when we could do things like that. And then four years ago, we started what we call our warm winter welcome. Um, pretty self-explanatory, but the idea being many of these refugees are coming into our Pacific Northwest climate for the first time, um, haven't gone through a winter like we experienced. So we collect coats, um, hats, gloves, and blankets. We started doing blankets a few years ago. Um, part of that being we've been in some, we've been privileged to be in some of these families' homes and, you know, heating a home is expensive. So they keep their homes kind of cold. And so we want to provide warmth and comfort and of course a welcome with a blanket so um so we started doing that about four years ago and we're in the middle of that right now um and then susan reached out about this partnership with with blankets with you with the quilt guild of course so um, i'll let susan share details about that but that's sort of what we do in a nutshell and um yeah who we are Let me unmute. Uh, thank you so much, Allison. That was a really wonderful summary of just some of what your incredible grassroots, beautiful organization is doing. Um, I also want to really thank and call out to Kim King, who's our third co-organizer of this effort. Um, she spent the last month tirelessly looking for opportunities that our guild might be able to donate quilts to Afghan refugee families, and we found a wonderful opportunity with butterfly boxes because so many organizations working with refugees aren't able to accept like a wonderful extra and are busy advocating and helping the folks that need it most. So um, we just want to express how much it means to us that butterfly boxes could team up with us and has the bandwidth to like create this new direction. So we're really, really excited about how some wonderful things have come together for this. Um, so a generous Oregon company has donated a huge amount of blanket fabric. It's a soft, cozy, absolutely wonderful acrylic and wool blend that's very light and soft. It's machine washable. And we have um, multiple 55 gallon bags of this beautiful blanket header ready to share out as kits with anyone who'd like to make a blanket. Um, Kim King has made a beautiful one and has kits ready to go for folks. We'll have four pickup locations in the Portland metro area where you'll be able to see in the image that you see of the beautiful blanket stack. Um, you'll be able to pick up free warm and cozy blanket material that you can use to sew your own cozy blanket to donate to the Afghan families coming to Oregon. Um, Allison and her butterfly boxes team will work to directly share it with the families who could use it most as it's getting colder, especially this week. And what I'm the most excited about is that this is a project that is keeping this beautiful fabric out of the landfill because the company donating it is so eager to find sources who can use it. Um, we have enough for hundreds of kits. Please don't be shy. If you'd like to sew one, we'd love to get you a kit. Um, we'll have four pickup locations. Right now they're in Northeast Portland, Southeast Portland, Southwest Portland, and Milwaukee. If you're in a different area and would like to be a no contact pickup hub, let us know, we'll bring you some kits. 
um, we've written an easy tutorial to sew a piece blanket, which you'll see in the photo on the right. This is just a felled seam, just like the inside of your jeans. If you can make an incredibly beautiful quilt, you can make this blanket in an hour. It's fun. Um, we've added tips for sewing these like cozier, heavier weight fabrics. And um, Kim has extensively pattern tested and proofread my instructions. So I hope they're um, working out for everyone. Uh, Anne has added some links in the chat, which um, are so kind of quick to grab, but we'd love to have you sign up or email us at pmpggivesback at gmail.com. I'll show you on the next slide, um, besides these blankets, you can also uh, sew more typical quilting cotton and um, pieces that are more of a, um, you know, in our, maybe more in our wheelhouse. Market bags, uh, Allison has a wonderful tutorial she's shared that we'll be able to send you right away if you sign up. Keychains, folks who are arriving in Oregon, this will be the keychain that the first keys to their homes here will be on. This is a gift that really transcends like the simplicity of what it is. It really symbolizes home. Um, face masks for kids and adults, any pattern that you'd like. And then uh, plushies and stuffies, any method that you'd like. Crochet, knitting, sewing, applique, patchwork, anything that comes to mind. Um, we've got little details to share out about like best practice and what they're really looking for, but these would be wonderful to tuck into an arrival bag. As Allison said, they're greeting every Afghan refugee family arriving at PDX International Airport with these bags. And I can attest from my Girl Scout troop building bags at previous meetings. It's an incredibly thoughtful and incredibly useful and utilitarian combination. Um, toiletry bags, we'll share more about this when you reach out to us, but these need to be the size of a gallon Ziploc bag so they can hold everything. This is just something that people get started with and it needs to all be easy to find and easy to use. And then coming last, Kim King's incredible vision of quilts. Um, butterfly boxes can accept handmade quilts, throw size or larger, uh, bed size would be wonderful. Um, they are really seeing a lot of baby and toddler items donated, but um, they don't get as many larger quilts. And what would be incredibly helpful is um, family friendly in terms of design, um, no religious uh, elements or design, no uh, US flags, camo, military or other imagery like that but just anything that would just be welcoming, beautiful and fun. And they have a particular need for gender neutral items that are designed for teens and adults. So um, everyone loves the cute little kids, but don't forget about the other family members who may be less thought of in the typical donation cycle. Um, thank you so much, Anne. She's added lots of links in the chat. You can also direct message me in the chat or email as Anne has posted, um, PMQG gives back at gmail.com and we will send you all the information right away. Um, there's also a website page which Anna's posted. There's a little survey in there that you can sign up. And I'm gonna finish this by just showing you one, just one bag of these blanket scraps. So I hope that this brings it a little more to life. I'm 5'7 for comparison, <laughs> like a medium sized person. This is just one bag of incredibly beautiful soft blanket scraps. It's like an effort to lift it. We'll put it in a cute kit for you like Kim's lovely presentation. But we would absolutely love to have you partner with us and whether you have time to sew one keychain or five blankets, it will mean the world to the folks who receive these. The last thing I want to mention is on the last slide, um, just to reiterate, if you sew three blankets for this project, we will be so appreciative and we would really like to invite you to keep one. So often we donate things to organizations who can really use them and they're in our lives as we make them, but then they're passed to others who are in need and that's a wonderful thing. But one of the things we wanna build here is community and as Allison shared before COVID, uh, Butterfly Boxes was able to offer these wonderful potlucks. And it was just such a joy to meet folks chat with them and share dinner. But what we can do now is make a cozy blanket like the one in the picture and share two with new Oregonians, but keep one for ourselves. So we think of them when we use it in our own homes. So um, 
if you have any questions, please let me know. But I just want to thank everyone in the guild who has been so incredibly supportive of this, the wonderful company who donated all the blanket header that we're very excited to get you, and um, my wonderful co-organizers, Kim and Allison. And uh, thank you to everyone on the 2021 and 2022 boards for your wonderful support on this. It's really appreciated and it's an opportunity for us to do a lot of good. So um, last thing, there's no huge deadline on the blankets. It will go through February. So if you're busy with holidays or busy with all, you know, COVID life, don't worry about it. You've got several months, but we'd love to, you know, meet you where you're at. If you can pick up a kit this week and you sew it in January or February, that's fine too. But this isn't a race. You can make these at your own kind of schedule and pace. And then for the handmade items, they're more evergreen. Um, after the warm winter welcome, they'll still be able to accept uh, masks, toiletry bags, stuffies, and quilts throughout the year. So please keep it in mind when you find an extra hour here or there. And um, to learn more about butterfly boxes, please see Anne's incredible links in the chat. Um, if there are any other questions I didn't get to, uh, just let me know and I'd be happy to answer them uh, after we move on in the chat. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Susan. I just wanted to thank Susan and Allison and Kim um, for organizing this and an extra special thanks to Kim because she's the one who originally reached out to the Guild um, with the idea to provide quilts to um, refugees coming in. So um, yeah, we're just really appreciative that we can um, uh, bring, bring some you know, nice warm blankets to this community. Okay, so Charity Sew drop-off and pick-up day will be on Saturday, December 18th for 10 to 1. You can find the address in the members only section of the website. And um, Kath emailed me some beautiful pictures of some completed quilts that were finished this year that were donated. And just a little um, thank you to Kath for um, leading our Charity Sew for um, Dorn Becker pick you. Um, about 15 to 20 quilts per month were donated this year. So um, I believe it was like around two, 250, 300 quilts. 10 quilts went from this month went to hospice and 10 quilts are headed to Camp Aaron. And Camp Aaron is a camp for children that are grieving the loss of a family member. And also a thank you to the woman behind the woman, Sam Hunter. Sam um, does a lot of help uh, with the charity program as well. She um, purchases, a lot, purchases a lot of the things um, that are used and um, helps put kits together and um, delivers the quilts. So yeah, thank you. Charity. Uh, kits are available, um, drop off and pick up on Mondays. You can text before coming and the information is on the members only section. So this is basically, um, you make a zipper bag, it gets filled with personal care items and donated to Portland Homeless Family Solutions. So the December block of the month, is Tara Lee available? Tara Evans? I don't see her in the participant list. Okay. So um, the final block this month um, was all about increase. Um, so she's, she said that this um, can apply to so many different things, inflation, temperature, um, strife, and the possibilities are endless. So this is the final block. And I just wanted to thank Tara for designing this wonderful block of the month for us and um, giving PMQG a nice discount to sew along with her this year. And so to everybody that's been participating in the block of the month and posting um, to the hashtags that were provided, we, the Guild has picked a winner to win a $75 gift card to TaraLeeQuiltery.com. So this is Tara Evans' website. She not only has um, patterns, but she also sells fabric, kits, um, and I, I saw stickers. Um, I think she had like jean jackets and hand dyed fabric. And she provides US and Canadian shipping. So it kind of seemed like, uh, you know, no brainer as far as um, offering this as the prize. And Erin um, did a random number generator earlier this week. And the winner is, Erin, do you want to announce it? Sure. 
it was Mar it was Marcy McFarland. Well, congratulations, Marcy. And we will be in contact with you as uh, far as how you can get your um, gift card. And thanks for everybody who's been sewing along with us. So the UFO club winner, if um, Renee is here, she can unmute, unmute. So at the beginning of the year, we asked um, club members basically paid a fee to join and they could register up to 10 quilts and each quilt that they completed this year equaled one entry into the um, pot. And then the winner of um, whoever, you know, whoever Renee draws will split the total amount that we earned from the entry fees with, so they'll get half of it. And then the PMQG scholarship fund will get the other half. So Renee, would you like to draw the winner? So oh, there are 11 members. And, um, and so this winner will get $55 to split with the club. So Jen Dietz. Jen, congratulations. We so you, she'll be mailed um, the money. Awesome. Congratulations, Jen. Just a reminder that 2022 memberships are on sale. Um, we have two different membership types. Uh, the PMTG only membership is $45. And if you would like to be a member of the MQG, you would need to purchase the $12 add-on. So if you are a member of another Modern Quilt Guild, um, it would probably be best for you to not purchase the MQG add-on because you probably have MQG membership with that modern quilt guild um, so and if you have any questions about how we um, do membership please feel free to email um, so the memberships are on sale now and we do have scholarships available um, there is a form on the website to sign up for the scholarship and you will be notified um, the scholarship end date will be december 15th and you will be notified on the 16th whether or not um, you were selected for a scholarship Just a reminder that the sister's theme is song title. So create a quilt based on your favorite song. It's probably a good idea to get started because you know sisters always comes up faster um, than, yeah, it always comes up way faster than I anticipate for. So sisters is uh, the largest outdoor quilt show in Oregon and the Portland Modern Quilt Guild has a special exhibit there. And we usually try to have a theme um, so that all of our quilts are somewhat cohesive. And so this year we voted at the last meeting and it, song title was selected. So more information regarding the deadlines and submissions will be coming soon. Talk about next year's block of the month. That's me, I'm excited. Is my turn? Yeah, yeah, my turn. Okay, cool. Um, I'm so excited. Uh, big evening though. It's been a bit of, it's been like a rash of emotions. Like it's just, you guys did such a good job. Big shoes to fill and um, I'm honored. I'm humbled. I'm definitely scared. But the team that we have for next year's board is amazing. Like they're so good. Like, so don't worry. The whole team is going to be like really great. Um, anyways. Uh, block of the month 2022 uh, mod circle get to square. Um, I have a PowerPoint presentation I made and um, I'm not going to go through it this evening. I only give you a quick spiel. Um, it is a group project. So far, I believe we have uh, four or five designers designing a block for the block of the month. And we're having a meeting on info if you want to design a block or if you're interested in the block of the month 22 being on the design committee. Uh, we're having a meeting on Sunday, this Sunday at 6 p.m. I think there'll probably be a link somewhere. Erin um, Case knows everything. She probably knows where the link is. Um, it's pretty exciting. It's gonna be a fun block of the month. Um, I don't wanna bore anybody with the details of it, just kind of giving you a sneak preview of it now. Oh, Erin says the link is in the members only page. So um, yeah, it'll be really fun. So more on that probably later. So that's all I wanted to say. Okay. 
I think you're up next also for retreat. Me? Oh, <laughs> this is exciting. This is so exciting. Sorry. Man, I have been doing so much research on everything. I'm a research person, so I'm researching a ton. I mean, I've got like spreadsheets and SWOT analysis and all kinds of things. Do you remember retreats when we would go somewhere and sleep overnight and do things? Dude, we might be doing that again. So um, I put together um, uh, a survey. I think Erin can click the survey. We'll do that in a minute here. Um, we're trying to gauge interest. Um, do you, do you want to go and have a quilt retreat? How do you feel about doing that in the fall? Um, we, has, we have a reservation. Um, we are doing a couple of different ideas. Um, so we're looking for people to volunteer um, on our subcommittee for the planning for that. Um, so we just really want to know, we have such a huge guild now and things have changed. And one of the opportunities of that we have been given from this pandemic is we get to drop things that weren't working before and a chance to go into somewhat of a beta mode and try out something different. And hopefully that will fit better what our members want. So um, that's what we're hoping. So this is a quick survey just to see maybe if you're interested. I just want to get quick numbers. There's not, you know, it's 86 people here. So obviously not a full uh, guild temperature check. And then I also created another survey that I think Aaron Case is going to be sending out via email or posting somewhere maybe soon. I need somebody else to look at it because um, I'm not uh, a great technical writer. Um, I, my sentence structure is garbage. So I want someone else to look at it before I launch it. Um, just letting, wanting to know like what you want out of a quilt retreat. Do you, do you want uh, overnight? Do you want all three meals? Do you not want lunch? Do you want this? Do you want to share a room? Um, how's it going to go? Anyways, so a lot of information and I could talk for an hour on it. I'm just super excited about it. Um, we do need some volunteers, though, to be on the planning committee specifically for a fall quilt retreat, because we have a lot of really fun ideas in the works, and um, we need a couple of people to help uh, put that together. It won't be that it won't be that hard, though. I promise we'll, it, won't, it won't be that challenging. Um, it, 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 it could be fun. If you could have a good time. So if you're interested in volunteering, please email the guilds and uh, let us know. Um, we need three. We're looking for three people to do the, do a retreat. Um, did anybody have any questions for me while I'm on the page? I mean, I could talk about it much longer, but I don't want to take up the time. So anybody have any questions? It looks like no questions in the chat. No. Okay. And Wait. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, let's see. It looks like we only have uh 63 percent participation in the poll so far um so if everybody could just um just quickly click yes or no um or maybe you already it's looking like i don't know can you see the results sarah or no erin are you able to publish the results no yes, I, I have to i have to end the poll first okay so i just wanted to give everybody a last chance to vote and then i'm going to close it right now yeah give us a vote do you want do you want to do you want to go to a Ooh, okay. All right. Close. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of other quilt, uh, quilt guilds are starting to do uh, retreats um, and the and the planning, the reservations for those that are going to be in the fall need to be made like now, like this month, because they're starting to fill up. So that's where we're headed at. We're talking about doing a overnight quilt retreat in the fall. So we're doing that virtual retreat. It's going to be really fun uh, at home in March. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So um, our final business member spotlight for the year is Marty Price Morton's um, business, which is Wild Quilt Works. So Marty is a hand guided long armor. So everything that she does is custom and it is absolutely fantastic. I mean, her work is just, it's gorgeous. She also creates custom quilts. So if you um, either memory quilts or art quilts, or if you know somebody that doesn't know how to quilt and they approach you and say, hey, can you make a quilt for me? And you really don't want to, you can direct them to Marty and she can help them out. Um, she has a great process and um, I encourage you to take a look at her website and um, view more of her work there. 
So thank you, Marty, for being a business member. And now we're ready for show and tell. And so Nadia, Chris, is, yep. Uh, I guess the slide didn't get sent in to you, but there's a oh. spring virtual retreat. We wanted to say, save the date. Oh, okay. Who's talking? I can't see. Oh, sorry, Roseanne. Roseanne Hatfield and, Hi, Roseanne. <laughs> and Jenny McKee, the two oh, are, are hosting the spring virtual retreat. We're not as high energy as Sarah. <laughs> so uh, we'll, it'll be virtual and it will be uh, March 4th, 5th, 6th. We're going to have guest speakers, games, prizes, charity box, and just some fun social sewing. We'll be sending out the um, uh, forms to, to, you know, to sign up for it in after January. All right. Thanks. Sorry. That's great. Thank you um, for letting me know that. I'm really sorry that I didn't see your slide. I guess we didn't get the slide in, but thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And I know that um, I've heard a lot of really great feedback on the virtual retreats that we've had so far. And um, yeah, it should be really, really good. So thank you. Okay, so um, show and tell. And Nadia, who is our 2022 PMQG secretary is going to lead show and tell. And um, so yeah, get ready to show your quilts. Thank you, Nadia. You're welcome. Thanks, Chris. And thanks for having me. Um, even though I'm secretary, I'm going to be hosting show and tell for probably most of the meetings next year. So I figured why not practice now? <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm ready. Okay, this is uh, Ann Nelson's quilt called Alan's Quilt. Do you have anything you want to say about that? Wow. Um, hello. So oh. this is a quilt that I started in 2020 and I made it for my husband's uncle Alan. And he is a Vietnam vet. He was there from 67 to 68. And about three days after he left, a big uh, anti-aircraft thing went right through the tent that he stayed in. So um, he was a near miss and we love him to pieces. And he is a really big, important part of our family. But he's, he's a hippie and he didn't want a flag waving kind of quilt. So this is what I came up with him for him. Um, it's that uh, Mackinac Island, I think is how you say it. Line, and of course it's a pineapple. So um, I had to go over to his house actually the other day, I gave it to him on Veterans Day and it was still neatly folded in the corner and I shook it out and I put it on him and I said, this is for using, not for saving. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's lovely. Wow, what a great, what a great story. And all those tiny pieces. That's amazing. Yes. Thank you. And we have Anne again. Yes, so these, these three show and tells are part of the UFO club. I got them in this past month um, for my entries, but this is an acorn table runner and it's about 60 inches long or so. Um, during 2020 quarantine, I sort of took over being in charge right. of making sure my parents had things to do, but they live in Arizona. So we did a lot of Zoom things and every Wednesday, all of the quilters, well, I made them um, out of sheer will, we made projects together on Zoom. And so there was four or five of us, depending on the time, and the acorn table runner is one we all did. But my mom was in her uh, mid eighties and she couldn't cut her fabric. And of course dad couldn't do that for her. So every week I would cut it and mail her little packages of acorn parts. So that's my big finish. And all of my quilts were quilted by Tammy Levin too, who's a great business member. Awesome. What a great story about uh, getting together during COVID and doing something with your family and quilt related. That's great. Yes. And Anne, again. Look this at is this. my last one. I finished this one with Tammy this spring, but all the blocks are from an Allison Glass sew along on Instagram. And I think that was in like 2019, I think. Um, it's all made from kaleidoscope. And if you've never played with the kaleidoscope fabrics, they're wo woven and she uses one thread color that goes this way and one that goes the other. So they're really rich, deep beautiful fabrics to work with. Um, and I made three blocks a day for, she's how many, 11 weeks. And I didn't want a regular shape quilt because I really didn't want to use it for like sitting on the couch and stuff. Um, so I made a bed runner and that lays across the middle of our bed and we have all white, you know, stuff. So it's, it's quite lovely. Most people, when they walk in my bedroom, they like touch it and go, what's this? And so Tammy quilted it with sort of a straight line thing, but she buried all the widths on it. And it's 
the quilting's amazing. And that is at the quilt show that's at Mission Mill for Helping Hands here in Salem. So. Wow, that's gorgeous. That looks, I, I, I can't even imagine how it would look in person. The photo's awesome. That's it was great. a fun project. Well done, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, on to Roseanne Hatfield, Hi. wow. This actually gave you the wrong name. It's called Ocean Reflection at Sunset. I forgot what I called it. This is me procrastinating. I was kind of stuck and didn't know what to do. So I pulled out two ombre scraps and started just whacking them up and putting them together. And that came out of it. I'm like, okay. Wow, if that's procrastination, I'd like to see what you do when it's not procrastination. It's, it's gorgeous. It just glows. <gasps> Lovely. And Roseanne again. Yeah, me again. So I belong to a small group, Mod Quilt Squad, and they gave a challenge, 50 inches. It was 50 inches, zero shades of gray. And it, the rules were just 50 inches per side. So I got a little creative and this is my 15.91 inch quilt. My 50 inches are the outside. Nice, that's an interesting take on, on the challenge and it's gorgeous. I love the colors in that. Okay, on to Sarah Flynn. Kaboom! Yeah, this is my quilt. Um, I love. I I uh, made this quilt at the very beginning of the pandemic. Um, the little bombs are are actually um from my Strawberry Wild quilt that was published by the MQG. Um, I served in the military. I was a mineman. I built underwater mines. So I've been wanting to figure out how to make a bomb quilt because um, they keep on asking me to make, of course, a raffle quilt. This is not going to them though. Don't worry about it. My husband already claimed it. And it's also uh, reminiscent of uh, the move, the uh, video game Kaboom. That was that fun Atari game with the paddle that goes, like, goes back and forth, play Pong with it. But Kaboom also super fun game. Love that game when I was a kid. So um, yeah, I made this one from scraps. And it was, you know, helped me get through that first uh, March. And then I put it on a shelf and I forgot to even take a picture of it. And I pulled out at the end of uh, my UFOs, my UFO for this month. And I totally forgot how awesome this quilt is and quilted it. So I'm really excited about this, my quilt. Wow, Sarah, that is so original. You can always count on an original work from Sarah. Awesome. And Angel, yeah, I recognize some... these blocks. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this was from the mini mod swap, and I uh, wanted to thank everyone who participated in that. And I, I was in two groups, warm and cool. So this is one thing that I managed to make out of all of the little blocks I got. This is a um, a pattern from Lily Ella Stitchery. It's a whole tight folio. So you can put needle, the, uh, there's a metal in it, so you can attach your needle minders and then there's felt inside to put your needles. This is a nice little practical thing that's pretty um, that you can use for any kind of hand stitching. Very cool. What a cool idea. I'd, I'll have to look that up, the pattern. Wonderful. I'm going to tell Barine too that uh, you finished it. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. And this is a little wavy, but this is the um, my top from the Audrey Essary class. And I don't care if it's a little wavy because her directions are so fantastic. Every single intersection of all of those curves, they all lined up. And I was so dang proud of that. So I haven't gotten around to uh, completely finishing it yet, like some of the other participants in that workshop have already done. But um, I got this done, I got it pieced, and I did not have to re like rip out and redo. So um, very, very, very happy. That was a great workshop. That's so awesome. I'm looking, I'm staring at the screen and yeah, all of the intersections worked out so perfect. I'm very jealous I didn't get to take that class. Good job. Wow. Oh, 
Okay, Marcy. Hello. Oh, well, as you can see, this is the uh, Tara Evans. I finished this, although the outside of it, I ran out of gray, so I had to go buy some more gray. I really don't like buying fabric <laughs> because I have so much. But uh, once I put it together, my husband said, oh, my God, that looks like Oregon because of the teardrops, which he translated to uh, raindrops. And the gray is just the Portland sky all the time. So this was a really fun block of the month to do. Uh, it kind of made me think about everything. And I'm really glad I did it. And then I won money to get, buy more stuff from Tara. <laughs> so yeah, how perfect is that? That's that's great. You you won the prize and, and your your quilt is up on show and tell. That's so great. Way to go. Amy Dame, you're up. Hi. Sorry, I had to put myself back up vertical. I was looking at it sideways so I could see pictures bigger. Um so um, I just went to Manitoba, which is like above the Dakotas for all of you in the States um, and to visit my grandpa. And um, my grandma passed on the 23rd of December last year and he's having a really hard time. And before when they were, you know, young, a little bit younger, but still retired, they would go in their RV and just drive everywhere and spent a ton of money on gas and then grandpa wouldn't want to go anywhere because the tickets were too expensive to go into the museums and stuff like that but they would buy t-shirts or grandma would buy t-shirts she was allowed to buy those so um she had a large collection of t-shirts of various places they went um and so i stitched this up for my grandfather he keeps his apartment very warm like a lot of seniors do so it's actually more of a coverlet um the backing is a vintage sheet and i just tied it um but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I just did it pillowcase style because I was there for a week and had to get it done before I left. Um, but I kind of learned a lot about, you know, interfacing and that sort of thing. And I ended up top stitching all of the seams. Um, and he is really, really touched by it. And that tiny little picture of him, everyone's like, oh, he looks so happy. And I'm like, he doesn't actually look happy. He just happy, looks happier than usual. But <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I didn't get a label put on it. So I'm gonna finish that and my little sister is going for Christmas. So she'll sew the label on once she gets there. So I know it's uh, not super modern, but um, if you look close, there's some pieced ones from like shirts that had stuff on the little, like on the lapel, lapel, like on the chest and stuff. And I really enjoyed piecing some of them. And if, it, if I had more time and make it a bit more modern, I would have really enjoyed putting more piecing in and making it like a little bit more of an irregular grid. So. Thank you. That's, that's awesome. That's so touching. And being a Canadian myself, I, I get, you know, a little weepy eyed at Terry Fox and <laughs> my and grandmother, my grandmother passed. Um, this was her fifth time of can with cancer. So Terry Fox um, is a can was a Canadian who had cancer and ran. I don't think he, he didn't make it the whole way, but he ran across Canada fundraising for cancer research. And um, a close friend of my family is one of his cousins. So my out here in BC and so my parents have been involved for many years with every year with it and my grandmother as a survivor the cancer survivors get the red t-shirts um they're specifically designated that way and so every year we'd send her a new one um and she wore them constantly and like they're so these were the best of what was left <laughs> so they meant a lot to her as a as a cancer survivor herself so wow that's so great thank you Amy for sharing Thank you. Erin Case. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I have three quilts in the show and tell, and the first two are um, QuiltCon rejects. And I just wanted to encourage everybody to go to Instagram and look at the QuiltCon reject uh, hashtag. It's like the greatest quilt show ever. Um, it's amazing to see everything that's there. So. Uh, the smaller picture on the left is uh, a quilt I was able to show in QuiltCon together um, this past year, and it's called Lockdown Leftovers because we weren't able to go to the quilt sh shops in the uh, first part of the pandemic, and so I just used what I had. 
Um, but I had some leftovers from that quilt. So this is Lockdown Leftovers 2, which is made from the leftovers of the leftovers. And at this point, I don't have any more of any of these fabrics. So I will not have a Lockdown Leftovers 3, unfortunately. Um, so this is one of my QuiltCon rejects. And awesome. then the next one, I, uh, along with a lot of other people that I've seen on Instagram, uh, played with ice dyeing over the summer. And this is like the most impossibly difficult um, palette to photograph. It's hot pink, uh, bright yellow, and uh, a bright turquoise, but I could never get the photograph to look very good, which is probably why uh, it's also a QuiltCon reject. Um, it's a giant sawtooth star, and um, it's uh, matchstick quilted, and uh, it is another QuiltCon reject. And then the last quilt I have in show and tell um, I showed one of my twins uh, quilts last month, and then this is Nathaniel's. Uh, he's a big fan of Grogu, and Joanne's has a bunch of these uh, Baby Yoda slash Grogu prints. Um, and so I bought every print that they had and then added like a cream, a navy, and then that kind of Grogu green um, and created uh, this quilt. And so now I am in good shape for this year's Christmas. <laughs> Awesome. Wow. In good shape for Christmas. That's kudos to you. And wow, those QuiltCon rejects. I can't believe they're rejects. And yes, please, everyone do check out that hashtag. There's uh, there's a lot of great stuff there, including Erin's beauties. Okay. And I think it's Chris Batten, please. Yes. This is my quilt. So this is um, a pattern by Sam Hunter called Faster 14. And I made this quilt during um, QuiltCon together. Um, I stayed in a little um, uh, Vacasa rental on the beach with some friends and um, enjoyed all of the lectures with them and made this quilt. And it truly is like one of the fastest quilts I've ever made. <laughs> so, and my husband saw it and immediately claimed it. And so it, it lives, he's got it, so. <laughs> Actually, I think I have it right now. <laughs> I think I stole it back, but yeah. So nice. Those colors are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And the pattern is so interesting. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it's so it kind of looks like improv, but it's not. And mm. it's it's such a fast make. It's great. Very cool. That looks like I was the last one for show and tell. Thank you, Nadia, for leading that. That was great. Thank, Thank you. So much. Okay, hey, so uh, just the summary of the important dates coming up. Uh, our next meeting is January 20th at 7 p.m. with Varushka Zarate. She will not be offering a workshop that month, so it is just the meeting. Um, our workshop for this month is December 12th at 10 a.m. It is now currently sold out, and there is a waiting list available just in case that last minute has to drop out. Um, the wait list is on website. Uh, Charity Quilt Drop-Off Pickup is December 18th. Queer Quilters Small Group, I believe, is meeting December 22nd, um, unless if uh, they've decided to change the date, I'm not really sure. Um, and the DEIA education event is January 12th, so make sure to register for that. So thank you, everybody. I hope you have a safe rest of your year. And we will see you back in 2022. Thanks, everybody. Wait, I'm trying to stop my screen share. <laughs>